My subscriber lost a build competition, so I transformed his entire Minecraft world. Recently, I held a build competition over on my Discord server with a small cash prize for the winner. The entries had to be submitted within one week and the rules were as follows. It had to be a small medieval themed kingdom and it had to contain a castle slash monument, a watchtower, a village and lastly a bridge. As well as choosing a competition winner, I also stated I would transform another world submission of my choosing that didn't win but deserved to get some recognition, showed talent and deserved an epic upgrade. And this is Wrath's World. As you can see, it features all the requirements, but adopts a more unique style than your traditional gray stone medieval kingdom. This build particularly stood out to me. Whilst it wasn't the grandest of builds, each structure was very well thought out and you can really tell that there was a conscious effort made to avoid making something generic, which in turn creates a more challenging transformation for me to pull off. Following the launch of the new Razer Blade Pro laptops, Razer were kind enough to send me my own to test out for this video. Throughout different stages of this build, we're going to jump into RTX on the laptop to see how things are coming along. These bad boys are packed with the new Nvidia 30 series GPUs, so they're more than capable of handling even the biggest of builds. This particular model is packed with the new 3070 GPU. You don't have to look far to find great ray tracing in Minecraft with RTX. There's a stark contrast between ray tracing turned on and off. Ray trace lighting, reflections and shadows, as well as physically based textures add incredible depth to the game that you'll instantly recognise once playing. RTX is only available on the Windows 10 version of Minecraft. First things first, we're going to jump into World Painter to create a brand new world for Wrath's Kingdom to reside in. His build featured a village on one island, with the castle on a separate second island. So I kept that in mind when creating the new landscape to mimic his design on a grander scale. Also, if you'd like me to upload the world download for free over on my Patreon, then you've got to get this video to 100,000 likes. It takes you a few seconds to click the like button, but it helps me out a lot. The map is compromised of multiple islands. The main island would house the village, the castle would sit on the island above where I created this raised plinth, and I thought I'd also add an area on this smaller island below for a shipyard and dock, where people can access the kingdom and trade goods. With the plan in motion, I imported his build into the new world and split up each section, delegating them to their specified islands. Starting on the smallest of the three islands, I began making a clearing for the port. This section of the build is independent from the rest of the transformation, as Raft didn't include a shipyard or dock, so I thought I'd make my own interpretation of one before getting into transforming his actual world. Since we're working with islands here, I thought a little port was essential. Funnily enough, I spent a while trying to plan out the layout for this dock design, as I hadn't built a medieval kingdom in such a long time. So it took a little while to figure out my bearings and approach this section of the build appropriately. At the end of one of the piers, I built out a wider foundation for a rustic style lighthouse to aid in signaling down ships. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have used wood for the roof material as I think the whole thing would have gone up in flames. To finish off the dock, I added a second layer to the stone foundations with stairs leading up either side. Then I add one final slope that connects into the landscape and add a natural pathway that leads out to the bridge. Now as you can see, I start filling in the open spaces on the stone platform with buildings varying in shape and size. The houses are compromised of a stone foundation and feature predominantly spruce wood for a classic medieval style, to keep things a little bit more traditional and simple for this area. Out the front of this building, I quickly whip up two market shacks to sell fish and other goods, and this large space on the upper level of the dock features a ship maintenance building where workers would build or repair the hull of the kingdom's fishing and trade boats. Obviously, we need a way to transport the boats to and from this building, so just outside and next to the water's edge, I start building a large crane. It features giant gears to allow the crane to rotate vertically and horizontally for ease of transport. Lastly, I add a final small building at the other end of the dock before filling the remainder of the space on the dock with more market stalls barrels and lighting to make it feel livelier, like a realistic bustling dockyard. You might recall a few of these boat designs from previous builds. These two smaller boats featured in my Underground Kingdom build, while this final slightly larger boat I previously built for a survival based design. 
With these fishing and trading boats complete, let's check out the build so far with those beautiful ray tracing shaders on the Razorblade Pro laptop. There's something about shaders, specifically like this RTX one, it's just so gorgeous. The build is looking pretty good though. And can I just say, it's running really smoothly. <laughs> like really smoothly, more than I expected it to. While I do love vanilla Minecraft and all of its nostalgia that comes with it, shaders really do <laughs> make it just that much better. Just before moving on to the main transformation, I figured there was still rather a lot of space left on this small island. So branching off from the main pathway, I figured I'd best make a woodcutter's cabin. I took inspiration from some of Rath's building designs for this house, specifically featuring the same style of roof. Now out back of the building, I added a few piles of logs before scattering chopped tree stumps in the surrounding area and changing the grass to dirt. On the other side of the island, I again branch off from the main pathway, creating a little clearing to feature another building, similar in design to the log cutter's cabin we just made. Again, going for that traditional rustic medieval style. I really wanted to make sure this part of the build was more simple and traditional, almost keeping it totally separate from the main village as a more functional and practical part of the kingdom. To the left of this building, I quickly whip up a small tool shed, scatter a few barrels of goods around, before doing the same process of covering the landscape in dirt and tree stumps once more to finish off the small island. With the first island complete, we can now move on and begin to properly transform the build. Rath built this diagonal bridge and gatehouse, so we're going to keep with the whole diagonal style to make things a little bit more challenging. I begin by working solely on the gatehouse, specifically with some guard towers. I really try to stick to the original colour palette by using lots of spruce and dark oak wood but I ended up going for a completely dark oak roof as I felt the matching colours blended with this area a little bit better. I clear away the existing building and reposition the whole thing higher up so I have some more space to work with, meaning I can use weld edit if necessary. Having said that, by building this whole thing on a diagonal, it really limits the ability of being able to copy and mirror certain sections of the build. So the majority of this gatehouse and bridge is done by hand, which is why it took a little bit longer to complete. With both towers connected by a walkway, I continue the building down to the foundations and add a gate within the archway. I then reposition the gatehouse back down on solid ground and attach it to the existing pathway. With the gatehouse complete, the next stop is upgrading the bridge connecting the two islands. Using spruce wood, I build out a frame of the main bridge and incorporate a bunch of anvils for the railing design. I often use anvils in my builds to make these kinds of railings more interesting. Next, I add stone archways beneath the bridge. I felt this support was necessary as we needed to cross quite a wide river with our new landscape. Last but not least, we add a roof, which I not only build on a diagonal, but also with a gradual incline towards the center of the bridge, which took much longer than it actually looks. Moving on to the second island, I start with a little bit of terraforming to build the foundation on which the village will sit. I create a network of organic winding paths, as I didn't want all of the pathways and stairs to be man-made. I move to one side of the island to focus my attention on creating a small farm area where the villagers can grow wheat and grind grain. I create large sloping fields of wheat and section them off with little streams to act as an irrigation system. Now this area would feel incomplete without adding a windmill to power the irrigation system and grind the grain farmed from the crops below. Sticking to the more practical and traditional medieval aesthetic, I build a base from cobblestone using wood to create a frame and then add the structure of the sails or blades, depending on what you want to call them, using fences and banners to create a traditional styled mill. As you can see, I incorporate the windmill into the irrigation system by adding the source of water into the rock powered by the windmill above. So that I could transform each of the village buildings individually, I copy and paste them into a larger space to make it easier for alterations. For the first house, I begin by adding a stone base in a traditional medieval style to get the ball rolling. I then decided to change the materials to make the main village sort of match the color scheme of the main castle. I wouldn't typically use this color palette in a medieval build, and you'll probably have noticed that most builders stick to stone and dark wood to achieve a medieval effect. I wanted to create something a little bit more unique for this build, diverting from the usual medieval style adopted in Minecraft, which was why I chose this build to transform in the first place. To stick with the general layout of the original building, I finish up by adding a tower up top and mess around with various roof designs until I'm satisfied with the result. 
Similarly for the next house, my first priority was adding a stone base, before gradually changing and refining elements of the original build and finishing up with a little chimney on top. As you can see, I still add some variation between the buildings when it comes to materials, using birch with spruce wood for some buildings and oak with dark for others. Whilst it's always good to keep your village feeling like one piece, a little variation here and there can really help keep things feeling authentic. To finish things up with this building, I make some final tweaks to the tower, refining the main window and the observation area above. One of the aspects of the original build that impressed me was this diagonal gatehouse. I start by making improvements to the right side, which gives you a nice little before and after shot so that you can really visualize the changes I'm making here. I copied the finished design over to the other side and finish things up by perfecting an archway and overhead bridge connecting the two gatehouse towers. Since we have significantly scaled up the area we're working with for this village, I thought I would create three of my own little house designs to dot around as well. I tried to match the style of the other buildings, but also vary the shape and size a fair amount too, particularly with the roofs. For the final house design, you can see that I played around with a few different concepts for a tower element, but ultimately stuck with something made from the same materials as the rest of the building. A whole cobblestone tower just felt too disjointed from everything at this point. Next, I gradually transformed the original village watchtower into something that fits in with the rest of the village a little bit more neatly, but still maintains a slightly menacing stature, as a watchtower should. I end up using a portion of the design I used for the gatehouse design from the bridge near the docks, since they'd largely have the same kind of purpose. I finish up by adding the original roof back on so that I can create my own version of it. Now it's time to start working out how we're going to place these buildings that we've just built. So I begin by placing the gatehouse, laying down a pathway network and placing down some watchtowers at the outer edges of the area. To provide a little fortification, I design a wall segment to place around the village, embedding it down into the rock. This actually took an incredibly long time to paste around and blend with the terrain, but the end result was definitely worth it and provided the perfect foundations for our grand village. So, my next challenge is to paste around all of these buildings and make this feel like a bustling village. Since we have such a large area to work with, at first I was concerned that six main building designs wouldn't be enough. But I actually think this provides a pretty good balance between uniformity and variation. Obviously, I could have added more buildings to make it even less uniform, but I like the idea of a slightly more consistent infrastructure to reflect the limited materials available to the island. Plus, I didn't want to add too many more building types and deviate from what Wrath originally created. This is a transformation after all. Now to really bring this village to life, I decided that it needed a little bit of decoration besides just the buildings. I create a cart to move around materials, a little pile of barrels, a market stall, a small bench and a lamppost. I then make my way around the village, placing the additional little features I just made, creating little market areas and finishing up by adding a little lighting throughout. To make this transformation really special, I thought I'd add a little bit of functionality that I don't tend to add to my builds. I make a gate design and recreate it at different heights to act as separate frames for a gate animation. As you can see with the power of the clone command and a little bit of redstone, we have a working gate which I incorporate into the main gatehouse leading to the castle. Just looking at the gatehouse alone, it's uh, <laughs> it really does make quite the difference, these shaders, doesn't it? Oh, look at that. That looks so good. It's so, so pretty. With the village over in the distance there as well. Wow. Look, it's eating into the clouds. <laughs> but I always forget how different it looks when you're down there in first person compared to the cinematics of me flying around. It's so weird. With these shaders on, it literally looks like a model village or something. Like, it doesn't look real. Well, Minecraft real. Now that we've finished our village, it's time to bridge across to the main feature of the build. Of course, the Grand Castle. I create a traditional stone bridge with arched supports. Originally, I used black stone in my design, but I realised that this didn't really fit with the rest of the build and was way too harsh. So, I played around with some different materials, eventually settling on stone and dark wood accents, finishing up with lanterns from the village to light up the bridge a little bit. Last, but by no means least, it's time to start plotting out our castle. If you've watched my videos before, why are you not already subscribed? <laughs> We're almost at 1 million, 
But on a real note, you might have noticed from previous videos that I often use this technique to plot out more complicated builds. Using wool, I can make a clear plan of what I'll be building. I plot out the majority with this wool, but often add extra features once I have the buildings in place, as by that point I've got a better idea of what's missing. Following the plan we laid out on the previous clip, I add the first walls along with some key details, which will house the main layers of the foundations. I then use sandstone to fill in the beginnings of the main buildings, so I can still see where to place things on once I've built up the foundations. I start to add some dark wood stairs and a platform around the entrance and make a grassy area to the right hand side. Now it's time to get cracking on the main tower. Similarly to Wrath, I create the main structure using sandstone and use birch for the indented details. I gradually build up the tiers, making sure to include large pillar supports, since the base of this tower is pretty huge. After finishing the finer details of the bottom two layers, I move up to the next layer, which, as you can see, incorporates what will later become a balcony. I build the tower up to world height, gradually making the tiers smaller each time. I then create an indented section just below the top of the tower, in the typical style that you would see in a fairy tale castle. Next to the steeply pointed roof, I add another miniature tower for a bit more flair. Being a Harry Potter fan, this aspect was inspired by Hogwarts. Now at first I felt like my main tower looked a little bit too bulky, but once I add more elements it becomes clear that this was completely necessary and actually works really well. So I build up the first of two towers that would sit either side of the main tower, building in a very similar style but much thinner. Again, once all the elements are added, you'll see that the proportions of the main tower really work well with its surroundings. To begin adding those elements, I mirror this smaller tower to the other side and I alter its height before creating bridges between the towers at different levels. Next up, it's time to make a start on the rectangular connecting buildings, which really tie in the proportions I mentioned from the main tower. I create this building loosely based on a gothic style, with lots of crenellations and a steeply pointed roof to match the rest of the castle. I add a round window before moving on to the next building of this type, creating it at a lower height this time. Mimicking the style of the previous building, I finish up the smaller version and add some finishing touches, creating a window design with redstone lamps behind it to imitate a stained glass window effect. Now as previously mentioned, I often add extra elements that I hadn't originally planned. So here I add another small tower and branch it across with a bridge to a tower that I place atop the rectangular building we just made. As you saw in the floor plan, I plotted out some separate buildings that would still be part of the main castle, but aren't actually physically adjoined. For the larger towers, I paste some of the designs I created from other parts of the castle, making adjustments where necessary. For the smallest tower, I make something new, changing things up with a simple square design this time. Next, I begin creating the main rectangular building that ties these towers together, maintaining the same style that I adopted for the other rectangular buildings we just created. So that this all fits together with the rest of our castle, I bridge across and add another little central tower atop the rooftop of the main building so that everything links nicely. To blend the cobblestone to the sandstone a little bit better, I convert the detailing at the top of the walls to sandstone before making a start on the front building. Again, I largely mimic the same style I used in the rest of the castle, changing things up again with another square tower, some rooftop windows and a mini tower to add a little bit more variation. To finish up completing the plans we plotted out earlier, I add the outer towers which reside along the main castle walls. These are all uniform, so once I made one design I can then just paste it around and spend some time tidying them up. As you might have noticed, I switched out the dark wood walkways for spruce, so that there's a difference between the roof and the flooring material. Plus, this allows me to add campfires into the floor to make things look a little worn and realistic. I then create a small entrance as I didn't want to create anything too grand and take attention away from the main castle. Next, I create another large rectangular building to sit on the inner castle wall, with a smaller tower embedded into the roof and another embedded on the outer side. Of course, the plinth on which the castle sits is far too flat and large. So it's time for one final bit of terraforming to blend things in nicely and create a more natural and organic look to the terrain below. I chip away at the rock using a sphere brush before using sand to create a broad, gently sloping mountain shape. I convert the sand into a mixture of stone and grass before pasting in some custom world painter trees. 
Then lastly, to finish things up, I add lots of little windows to the castle, a bit of lighting and some foliage creeping up around the bottom of the walls. And with that, the transformation is complete. And here is our castle. Now that is interesting, I just noticed that. It appears as if stripped wood converts into oak wood. So that's why we've got this funky texture pan going on the castle at the moment. <laughs> but I'm not gonna knock it, it still looks pretty cool. And again, even with this massive world that I'm playing in, it's running so smoothly. This laptop really, <laughs> really is able to handle anything. We've entered the castle grounds. Also, I forgot to show you this actually when I was building, but I whipped up this little fountain here just to add a bit of decoration into the castle grounds. Right now, we're at the top of the tallest tower, peering down, looking at the rest of the castle. Look at this view. I have to say, I am very impressed with this laptop. It's running the game so smoothly and I'm able to use RTX. It's just it's such a bonus. I think it's time to finish off this build with one very quick, epic, cinematic. So, what did you guys think of the transformation? Make sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, like I said earlier, I will be putting this world up for free download if we can reach the 100,000 like goal. And remember to join the Discord if you want a chance to win any cash prizes in any of the build competitions that we'll be doing, or even a chance to get featured on the channel at some point, maybe with a transformation video. Also, I've got a second channel now and it's called More Trixie Blocks. So make sure you go over there and subscribe for more builds, survival, and just more content from me. Again, a big thank you to Razer for sending over the laptop for me to try out and make sure you all go check out the laptops for yourself. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.